hope. Yeah. The sound is good. I know I get complaints on every video about, hey man, your sound's kind of crap. Um, sorry. I just like do this at night. It's the only time I can do it and I, I, I gotta keep my, my voice a little low. Anyway, uh, the Leica T. I made a video about it a long time ago in video years and it got a decent amount of views and it got pretty good comments and some criticism and which I always welcome. Apparently Leica T still has a following and maybe it's kind of rebuilding its following or it might be having a sort of a resurgence or a rebirth which is great. I'm, I love old cameras. I love old film cameras. I also happen to love old digital cameras. Um, old digital cameras have a very interesting look. The files that come out of them, the raw files or the DNGs, um, are by today's standards no good. But again, they have a look, especially if they have any type of film simulations built in for, or if they have uh, like a JPEG file that has a interesting look. For instance, the uh, my Leica M240 had a uh, vivid film simulation, which was really beautiful, really high contrast. You lost a lot of your shadows into the blacks. It would just, you know, the toe, I guess to relate it to film terms, the toe was like, just, it would just hit and you would kind of lose a bunch. Well, that's just kind of how high contrast goes. That is what it is. Um, but apparently there's a rebirth of JPEG shooters and film simulations thanks to the Fuji X100V. Now the VI is out. I figured I would take this guy and uh, one of my favorite cameras of all time and I would do an update slash uh, comparison to another very affordable old digital camera. I'm pretty certain, first of all, that the uh, this is the 10-year anniversary of the Leica T, uh, the original Leica T. And like I said, I did a video about it already. Um, and honestly, I don't enjoy it as much as I used to, especially when I compare it to the film experience. You know, I would consider it a historic digital camera. It's got that look like Leica tried to market to the TikTok generation and because of how it works and how it's laid out you can shoot it really just one-handed it'll work um, one-handed and it's got the back screen which is what how people are used to shooting photos these days and EVF even though it comes as a ridiculously expensive accessory and the EVF is terrible quality. Using that back screen, the menus, the touch menus, how responsive the touch is, it, it really feels like in terms of how the camera works, like it came out um, this year or, or it's coming out next year. It really does feel like something that's coming out or about to come out or like uh, is testing some sort of new system, but it's 10 years old, so happy 10 year birthday, I think. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong, I don't care. For a digital camera to still be around after 10 years and to have a following and to be loved and not in like a kind of hipster resurgence, it's, an, it's incredible. It's a testament to how easy this camera is to use and just the, the experience of using it. You know, it really, well, I won't say it kind of gets out of your way the way a lot of modern um, setups do. It is a very natural way uh, by today's standards to practice photography. And it is a very satisfying tool to use. The way the buttons function, the way the wheels turn, it's just quality and it just feels like it'll work forever. But I also wanted to compare it against another camera that's, well, not this exact camera, another type of camera that's had a resurgence lately due to social media, which is the 
Fuji X100, but this is the original Fuji rangefinder style. Style, not a rangefinder, but a rangefinder style digital APS-C camera. Um, the 16 megapixel XE1. This was actually my second Fuji X series camera, but my favorite Fuji rangefinder. I've had the X100T and the X100F, and I didn't like them because the optical viewfinder often would just end up being gimmicky and not because it's not functional for manual focusing. It doesn't have a rangefinder focusing patch. It's an optical viewfinder, right? And then it's got autofocus, but then your autofocus is never visually where you think it is because of the parallax. It adjusts your frame lines from parallax, but not where you're autofocusing. A little hard to get across if you've never used the system, but if you have, you know what I'm talking about. It's not my favorite um, optical viewfinder and essentially a useless gimmick. So I never really love the X100 the way I love the XE series. Now the XE1 has that first Fuji X, has that first Fuji X trans sensor, which was just like a magic sensor. And at the higher ISOs, yeah, it's got pretty limited dynamic range, but it had this weird organic noise that, um, that I found, well, to abuse the term, filmic. And I really loved it, and I loved using it. The autofocus is slow, it has shutter lag, but the build quality, the buttons, everything on it is actually better than in the finish of the Fujis that you get today. It's really just like a high quality, just a high level finish. It's sturdy, it's durable, um, and it still ticks to this day. And I got this XE1 for about $100. Uh, I don't quite recall what I paid for the uh, Leica T, but um, couldn't have been more than maybe 400 bucks. But I think I got a discount because it's got a stuck battery, but just charge it through USB, it runs all day. We'll do a quick size comparison just to start. T is wider, XE1 is thicker. Um, they're, bo they're both almost the same height, but the XE1 or XE1, XE2 are very similar in size. I've, I've owned both. Um, is slightly taller, um, but with a 23 f2, this is a full frame lens on the Leica T. But the original 23 f2 Fuji Cron, uh, 35 millimeter equivalent on this camera, uh, focuses pretty quick, slow by today's standards. And you know that's going to go without saying for all of the buttons and dials and the kind of digital or uh, electronic features of these cameras. Um, they both have actual physical focal plane shutters and there's nothing to be said about that. They, they're just focal plane shutter, shutters on digital cameras. You know, no leaf shutters like the X100. Um, but really good lens, really good camera. It doesn't have classic chrome Acros. It doesn't have... Uh, What's the other one? A nostalgic negative. It doesn't have those film sins. It's got good old Provia, Astia, uh, Pro Negative, and that's basically it. Yeah, so the, the very first bare bones um, film sims that Fuji released, and they're really good. Um, the most underrated film sim, I would say, or two sims, which the film simulations that happen to be my favorites are Provia. And Astia, and I absolutely love this camera. Hundred bucks, uh, gonna run it till it dies, unless uh, some crazy happens and the price skyrockets. In which case, you know, I don't shoot it that much anymore. It's gonna have to go to someone who's gonna love it and use it. Cameras should be used. The Leica T. All right, I just talked about the XE1 a whole bunch, how great it is. So what it's got going for it is a completely different user interface to any, pretty much any other camera out there. And I've got a full frame 45 2.8 Sigma lens on it, but it's a crop sensor. So if you got the Sigma DCDN lenses, they're super cheap, good quality. You can put them on this camera and you'll have autofocus. With this, uh, the 45 in full frame terms, 
too tight for me. However, you get the best part of the image circle. I mean, pretty good for shooting portraiture. Overall, the T is not a great street photography rig because of how slow it can be to operate. Now on aperture priority with the uh, evaluated, evaluated metering or matrix, whatever you want to call it, um, you don't need to worry about exposure. And then you've got autofocus with uh, the L mount lenses. But again, there's just not, not a very fast autofocusing camera. So it, it does autofocus decently fast. Um, I would say the autofocus on this is on par, if not a little bit faster than the Fuji XE 1, 2 or stuff like that. Um, yeah, that screen is really good. It's got a decent resolution. The menus are great. Really, the, the menus are really, really great. It's just icon based. You touch them, you scroll and it, it just works. You know, you just you tap once, you change your ISO, you tap twice and you're in a sub menu. Um, the dials on the top are really, really quality. And I have not noticed them getting uh, squishy or, or less uh, tactile um, over the years. Hmm. I forgot the T has Wi-Fi. This is why I have the app. I remember now, the Leica T has Wi-Fi. So you can just tra shoot the, the images over to your, your camera using Leica's app um, 10 years ago. That, that's actually a pretty good app. And uh, wow, I forgot that it had that. One of the things I love about this is that I can put this in front of my three-year-old daughter and she can tell me what composition she wants or what she wants to take a picture of. And then I can like quickly explain to her what's going on or, or what it, how we're shooting. And then we take the picture and she can see it right away. And she already knows the difference between film and digital. So if it's digital, she's like, oh, I want to see the picture on the back screen. And if I show her like the film camera, she sees the back and she's like, oh, it's film. With like something like this, you can pretty much hand this camera to a child, explain basic things to them, and they'll get it. It's such an easy system to use. I hope Leica is revisiting this, maybe even in a full frame uh, version. That would be something special if they can bring this back, especially um, with these Sigma lenses that are out now that have these really nice aperture rings, physical aperture rings. And if, you've, if it's got a really good screen in the back, then it'll be really fast. 10 years in, I am still sometimes shooting it um, and, and it's still, again, slow. And I think the number one issue that I have with this camera is the shutter lag. You know, now that I'm actually using it to evaluate the shutter lag, it's not that bad, but it's got shutter lag but then it's got that focus confirmation. The focus confirmation is kind of slow because it's contrast detect. So it's got a focus pass and then back and then it drops the shutter. So I went over the XC1. If I had to pick a winner, I mean, I gotta be honest, the XC1, the image quality is better. Uh, I shoot, I like to have the raw files to work with. The JPEGs on this are better. I rarely actually use the JPEGs. I'm always editing, even though they're really good. You know, there's just so much more going for this. And I also just love using an EVF, even though the EVF on this is ancient and pretty terrible and it has a slow refresh rate and it's just low resolution, it still works. It still works, it's adequate. Is it good? No. Is it adequate? Yeah. If you compare it to a modern uh, EVF, like in the Panasonic S1, which, you know, not modern, but a really good EVF. It's night and day. However, if you want that rangefinder experience, if you want, you know, the type of cameras, digital cameras that people are after now, um, the XE1, the Leica T are really good. But, you know, if I was to keep one, it would be the XE1 the crop sensor rangefinder. This is hard to beat. I love this original X-Trans sensor. Um, really good colors. The files are decent. All the way up to ISO 3200, you get a pretty good look. They don't push as well as uh, full frame files off of something like, you know, 
Sigma FP, which has like the best stills image uh, files. I mean, that, that I think I've ever messed with. They're just, uh, they're like as robust as a GFX file. The raw files on this, I mean, I, it's kind of like shooting an M8 or an M9 and you're not gonna, you're not gonna push these files too much in post. The JPEGs are okay, but this blows the JPEGs on the Leica T out of the water, especially with the different film uh, simulations that you have available to you. Uh, love this. Uh, I wish Leica explores this interface a little bit more and gets new people into like dedicated photography um, cameras. But, you know, I, I prefer the old standard. So, you know, if I guess people are are thinking what I'm thinking or kind of having the debates in their mind for no reason that I'm having. I think I'm having this debate because I'm going to sell one of them, probably this guy. Um, I hope this video helps a little bit. If not, well then it's just content. <laughs>